Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for his church in the air, and then with his church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption draws nigh. Welcome, everyone, to another LHB Last Days Update. And as you can see, we have back with us Addie Miller from Discerning the Drift Ministries. I uh, hope you guys subscribe to her channel. Great stuff, great resources there. And you can see her program on, on our channel as well. Uh, you can look at the playlist and look for Discerning the Drift. Addie, you want to go ahead and say hi to the viewers? Hello, everyone. It's really great to be here. Thank you, Chris. Glad to be here with you. Looking forward to the topic. We're going to be oh, talking yeah. about today. And what a topic it is. Oh. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, the National Day of Prayer. Is it biblical? Uh, that's a loaded question. Is it biblical? I mean, it, what could be so wrong with a bunch of people, you know, getting together and praying? I mean, what's the harm in that? Right, Sister Addy? <laughs> what is the harm in that? Well, we're going to share what the harm is, right? <laughs> Oh, there we go. Some, yeah, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people would have probably accused us of being the little fuddy duddies, you know, like we're always, you know, coming down on something positive. Well, you know, positive or negative are not in the Bible, number one. And um, if you go back to Genesis, uh, when Satan said, you know, the day you eat of this tree, you will not surely die. You'll be like God's. He was being very positive. Yes, he was. You know, God was being very negative when he said the day you eat of this tree, you will die. I mean, that's a very negative thing to say. But guess which one was right? <laughs> you know, you know okay. God was yeah. right. So sometimes Absolutely. negative is good, okay? Uh, you know, and positive is bad, actually. That's so true. the National Day of Prayer. Um, mm. Sister Addy, why don't you give our viewers a little brief history of the National Day of Prayer? Yes, well, uh, the National Day of Prayer, the, all presidents, uh, historically speaking, all presidents have always called on uh, Americans, even back uh, Washington, Lincoln, but it was never an official, like a con congressionally official uh, day of prayer. It was just something the president came out and just requested uh, the, that the Americans uh, uh, do or become a part of and all. So, but uh, by the 1950s, uh, you have uh, Billy Graham who called on Congress to make it official, like an official uh, uh, congressional law where it was recognized from the government down uh, as uh, something to be observed. Well, it was officially made law in 1952 as an and that was and it was then considered an annual day of prayer. Uh, of course, that was President Truman. Now, by 1985, the National Day of Prayer, uh, the the uh, the National Day of Prayer took on the leadership. There was a leadership, and it was called a task force, which I thought was ironic because we have one now for the right. But anyway, there was a task force that was that was put into uh, into play, and that was to promote the National Day of Prayer. And I and I found found that in my research that the majority of the people that were the presidents of the National Day of Prayer Task Force were women. And I, you know, we don't want to chase that rabbit. But anyway, <laughs> so in 19, 1988, the officially the first Thursday of May was selected as the specific day. So it really started in 1952, but officially didn't come into to, to being observed on the first Thursday of May until 1988. Wow. So that's kind of just a little background. So, so there you have it, folks, the National Day of Prayer and where it yeah. came from. Yes. And uh, before we get into some of these video clips, because we're going to be showing video clips uh, as we go along here, I wanted to jump into some scripture as to show our position of, of where this is leading and why... Uh, we, we do not agree with the National Day of Prayer. Because again, it's not called the National Day of Christian Prayer. It's called the National Day of Prayer. And anyone, any, uh, here's a, a phrase I can't stand, but person of faith can get up there and pray to their God in unison with everyone else. And that just, it goes against the Bible. And one of the uh, scriptures, and I know uh, Sister Addie has this in her notes, is 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, from verse 14 to 18. It says this, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness 
with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a, will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Addy, yeah. how, how does this line up to what the National Day of Prayer is doing? Well, it completely exposes it for what it is. It's it's uh it's a tool of Satan. You know, it's like every time I sit down to watch, because I've watched the National Day of Prayer for many years, and uh, it, it was so distressing to me. But uh, what you see is, I'll, I'll ask the same question: uh, uh, What God are they praying to? Amen. Is there a mul is there a multiplicity of gods they're praying to? Uh, what Jesus are they praying to? Because you could even get that specific. Because several right. of them name the name of Jesus, but it's not the biblical Jesus when they That's speak right. of, the, of, of their Jesus. So, so it's like, what God? Is it a? Is it? It's just a, a plurality of gods. We're going to say, oh, but any God works. So it's a. It's, it's and a you know, you raise a great point. Which Jesus? You know, how do we know the right Jesus to pray to? How do we know that it's not the Mormon Jesus or the New Age Jesus or any Jesus? You know, that just comes on the scene. Well, the Jesus, the proper Jesus, has to be God. Yes. He has to be the eternal son of God. He has to be the risen savior. He has to be the one that's ascended and sitting at the right hand of the father. He has to be one with the father, you know, and um, he can't be the archangel Michael or, you know, or the brother of Lucifer or whatever else that you age God or the Catholic Jesus that needs help right. from his perpetual virgin of a mother, Mary. It, 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 these are different Jesuses. So I'm glad that you brought that up because a lot of people, they just hear the word Jesus, the name, and they're yeah. like, oh, they're yeah. Christian, you know? Yeah. Well, just like the word God, they people just, you know, for they automatically, and a lot of it is just innocence or ignorance. They'll say, well, you know, they talk about God. I said, yeah, but you have to understand that the God that they're talking about may not even be the God of scripture. So what Amen. are you going to do with that? And then again, it's more specifically, uh, the which Jesus. There are a lot that's of right. counterfeit Jesuses out there. That's and, right. And again, that's probably even more deceptive than than using the term God. That's right. That they use the term you, you, uh, Jesus. You know, you know. Before we go into these clips, I got, I got two more passages I want to go okay. ahead and and read to set the tone, so that our viewers know where we're going with this and where this whole thing is leading. Um, and we're going to go to Revelation chapter 13. I know you know it well. And, uh, of course, talking about the Antichrist and the false prophet in the future. And Revelation 13, might as well start from verse 1, and I'll read till, uh, till verse 8. And then we'll uh, jump down to verse 11 when it uh, talks about the false prophet. But it says this. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. And this is uh, the Apostle John, the last uh, remaining apostle of Jesus Christ on the island of Patmos. He says, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now, this is not talking about water. <laughs> it's called the sea of humanity, the sea of people, the political world, okay? Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So now we know this is an ungodly individual with an ungodly kingdom, the Roman Empire. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power. There's the clue. The dragon in the book of Revelation is described as Satan, okay? The dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded unto death, and his deadly wound was healed. Now, let me pause here. A lot of people... Uh, teach that the Antichrist will be uh, assassinated in the future. This is false. It says one of his heads was wounded unto death. Now, unless the Antichrist has seven heads on his shoulders, it's not talking about a literal head. It's talking about one of the kingdoms that was wounded unto death that was revived in the last days. And the one that can, we could identify is the Roman Empire, which is now revived as Europe, the modern day Rome. And that's the head that was uh, wounded unto death, but was healed. 
And that's where the Antichrist will actually come from. And it goes on and says, And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon. They were Satanist. They worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, the tribulation saints. And power was given, uh, given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, all whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, that says a lot right there of what's coming. So this beast, this Antichrist, is going to rise up out of the sea of humanity, out of the political realm. He's going to be empowered by the dragon, Satan himself. And the whole world is going to worship him and Satan. And it's amazing because we're seeing, and by the way, it says the whole world will worship him whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I'm right. glad it says that because that excludes all of those who belong to Christ, you know. So yeah. they're, they're, therefore only the ungodly will be worshiping this, this monstrosity. But we see the setup for it right now on this side of the rapture. And this is what ties in with the National Day of Prayer. You have all these people from different faiths yoking together in unison to worship who exactly? What God, like you said, what right. God are they praying to? Because yeah. Jehovah is not going to sit there and, and, and link himself up with Krishna and, and, and everybody else, the Mormon God and all of that. He stands out all by himself. He is God all by himself. So why in the world would a Christian think that the National Day of Prayer is a good thing? It's not. That's right. I totally agree. Absolutely. And that's what's troublesome because they're, it's so popular. You know, when, if you speak, if you speak negatively about the national day of prayer, any ecumenical movement, uh, you will be frowned upon Yeah. because you know, they say, Oh, you're too legalistic or you're not all in, in you're not all, all embracing and you're not loving and you're not caring or you don't care about the other people and they'll label you all of these things. You know, right. and, and unfortunately, uh, many of them, if you tell them the reason is they don't really want to hear it. They, they don't. don't they it. don't. They don't yeah. want to hear it. They don't want to hear what the word of God says. Yeah. And um, I'll read one more passage from uh, Revelation 13. And this describes okay. the second beast. Okay. And I personally believe uh, it'll be a pope of some sort in the future. Um, just a religious leader. So you have two beasts here. You have the first one coming out of the sea. Uh, that's going to be a political leader. And then you have the false prophet coming out of the religious sea, which is uh, actually coming out of the earth, which is the religious part of it. So you're going to have this unison of politics and religion uh, just coming together. Um, and I think there's an entity already on planet earth that's both political and religious. And we call that the Catholic Church, and they're in Rome. Okay. Uh, they got their own police force, own, own army and everything that, uh, you know, Jesus Christ said his kingdom is not of this world, you know, so uh, whose kingdom are they a part of? Because it's not Christ. Exactly. So the false prophet, Revelation 13, verse 11, says this, and I beheld another beast come up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, let's stop right there. This is what makes me think this false prophet is going to be a pope of some kind. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be from Islam or mm -hmm. from the New Age or whatever. Here's the key. He had two horns like a lamb, identifying yeah. him with the Lamb of God. And he spake as a dragon. Now, we know the dragon is Satan. So he looks like a Christian, but he speaks like the devil. Who can that be? I mean... Who can that be? It's not Islam. They don't look like Christians at all. It's not Hindu. It's not the Buddhist. It's, not, it's only one entity on planet Earth that, that has the trappings on the outside of Christianity with the stained glasses, the crosses, and all that. But they speak like the devil. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causeth 
the earth and them which dwell therein to worship, again, that word worship, the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he does great wonders, it goes the sign and wonders movement, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast and the, that, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, that him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six, a famous six six six. Um that that's so much to dig into, but the image of the beast. We I did a program with the holograms and all of that that's going around. Uh, that people are using holograms now to project their messages to a broad audience. Um, that, you know, I believe the image will be something like that. And of course, we have the mm -hmm. uh, implants that are being uh, produced yeah. now that people are willingly wanting to get implanted for their jobs and all of that. It's just more convenient. But we mm -hmm. see the setup for all of this happening right now. And again, at the National Day of Prayer, which, by the way, you're going to show us some uh, list of folks that you're going to talk about in a minute. Um, they get up there and they think that this is no big deal, that we're all praying to the same God. Right. Yes, they are. And that's the, that's the troubling part. And the, the, the thing with, uh, the, with the, the National Day of Prayer, when, it was, uh, when this task force was put into, into action in the 1980s, it was then considered, it was at that moment considered evangelistic it was considered that it was part of uh even the evangelical movement and a lot of it went back to B billy graham's part in getting it all started uh with with congress and everything so it is always considered um uh evangelical always but the under trappings is what what they bring in so it's a it, it is evangelically led but then they bring in all of these other um, uh, religions that are, are basically uh, Christian in name only. And then they right. bring religions from outside of Christianity, from outside of Christendom, which is what we see in, uh, in the National Day of Prayer. And we saw it again in the 2020 National exactly. Day of Prayer. And it goes back to that scripture that says not to be unequally yoked with these yes. unbelievers. I mean, this is just a big no-no. There's no compromise here. Uh, and, and God is not impressed and he's not pleased with it if a true Christian is yoking right. up with these individuals. Okay, yes. now since time is winding down, uh, yes. the, who's the first individual we're going to be looking at, Sister Addie? Well, the very first person that, uh, that uh, uh, Trump calls up um, – that we're going to mention today, because there was someone prior to her, but we're going to we're going to start off with uh, with these faith leaders, and that's what they're called, faith leaders. Was a Roman Catholic nun, and she was from the Poor Sisters of Saint Joseph community, and her name was um, um, let me see if I can pronounce it, and some odd names here, Inegda. Uh, Martinez, and she was the little Catholic nun, and she called on Mary, Joseph, and all the angels and the saints, and she claimed that everyone in her prayer, everyone on the planet, was God's were God's children. All right, let's take a look at what she had to now say. Now I'd like to ask the faith leaders of our country, some of the most important of our faith leaders, people respected by everybody, to say a few words, please, Sister Anita Martinez, if you would uh, perhaps begin. Sister, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to grant us in this moment to be in your most holy presence, in the presence of our Mother Mary, of St. Joseph, 
our protector and guide of all the angels and of all the saints. I ask you to please grant us the grace to be one in body and in spirit, all of your children of the earth. Please be with us so that with one voice, with the voice of the church, we may pray together to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, Son of God, you were sent by the Father to bear our weakness. Be with us in this time of crisis. Merciful Savior, heal and comfort the sick so that with health restored, they may give you praise. Divine Physician, accompany our caregivers so that serving you with patience, they may heal wisely. Eternal Wisdom, guide our leaders so that seeking remedies, they may follow your light. Christ, the Anointed, protect us in body and spirit so that freed from harm, we may be delivered from all affliction. Beloved Son of the Father, grant us the grace to grow in love for him, that we may love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. You who live and reign in the unity of God the Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We thank you, Father, for this moment. We thank you for your love for us. We ask you, in the name of Christ our Lord, to bless us with this most precious blood, to bless our nation, to bless our world, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, sister, very Welcome much. Back. What do you think? Well, uh, lots of red flags there for sure. But she she did talk about Jesus in her prayer. She, <laughs> she talked. She talk talked about Jesus. <laughs> she did talk about Jesus. But then you sit back and you go, "Well, that was the Roman Catholic Jesus, Roman which is Catholic not the Jesus. It's not the Jesus of Scripture." So she right. does wrap her prayer up at the end, calling on the name of Jesus. But oh, again, Jesus. if you know anything about Catholicism and the Jesus that they uh, they project to people, you know that is not the biblical Jesus. It's a Jesus who failed on the cross. And you know this, 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 this also, uh, you know, and I know this is gonna, you know, rub people the wrong way, um, but we have to be honest. And uh, you know, we pray for our president. We, you know, but yes. he's not saved. He's not no. a Christian. And, and no. folks, please. Uh, no matter your political stance, stop saying the man is saved when you, yes. it's obvious to the scriptures he is not. Okay, we love him. Yes, we do. Uh, we pray that he does encounter the real Jesus uh, in the future, very soon, hopefully today. But as of right now, he's not saved. Um, you know, and and I, I don't even know if the vice president is. I, I I just don't know. But I can tell you that our president is not, just by the things that he is saying. Uh, he's very religious very religious, but he's not saved. So keep praying for him and yes. pray for his salvation. All right, yes. the, the next clip, what do, you, what do you have on the next clip? Well, the, the next individual that was brought up, and again, difficult name, but let me see if I can get through it with my, uh, well, my wonderful phonetics. I'm he making was a, Addy work today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he was a Hindu priest, and his last name is Brahmbot, B R A H M, Brahmbot, which I thought of Brahma, you know, the right, Brahma, yeah, Brahma, yeah. But he is a Hindu priest, and he what he did was he prayed a prayer of, of peace, a Hindu prayer of peace called the Shanti Pat. Oh, now that's boy. not the Shakti Pat, not which the is pat, when, yeah. <laughs> no, not not when they pop you on the head and you fall, and you fall over, over or whatever. Right? Yes, not that. <laughs> But he called it the Shanti, because Shanti is Hindu for peace. So okay. it's a, a Vedic, Vedic prayer for peace. And he, he talked about, he, uh, he prayed peace unto nature, and he named all of this, you know, he named trees, and he named oh, water, wow. and he named all of that. And then at the very end, he said, and peace unto Brahma. Wow. So, and, and what we have to remember in Hinduism, there are over... There's thousands of gods in Hinduism. It is it is like uh, uh, polytheism on steroids. Wow! You know. Well, look. So, let's, yeah. let's let's hold that thought because okay. I know you're gonna have a lot to say on this after we watch this clip. <laughs> let's roll. Pujari, Haresh, Brahmat. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. President. In these troubled times of COVID-19, social distancing and the lockdown, it's not unusual for people to feel anxious or not at peace. The Shanti path or the peace prayer is a prayer that does not seek worldly riches, success, fame, nor is it a prayer for any desire for heaven. It is a beautiful Hindu prayer for peace, Shanti. It's a Vedic prayer derived from the Yajur Ved. And the prayer goes, Om Dior Shanti Ranta Rikshagwam Shanti Prutavi Shanti Rapaha Shanti Roshadaya Shanti Vanash Pataya Shanti Vishwe Deva Shanti Brahma Swargam Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Shama Shanti Om Shanti 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 The prayer translates into Onto the heavens be peace Onto the sky and earth be peace Peace be onto the water Onto the herbs and trees be peace. Onto all the crops be peace. Onto Brahma and onto all be peace. And may we realize that peace. Om, peace, peace, peace. Thank you. So he's praying to nature. He's praying yeah. to uh, the, this peace prayer to this, what do you yeah. call it? The, shat, the Shanti? Shanti. 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 Pat. Wow. Shanti wow. Pat prayer. And it's a Vedic prayer. And it's and it's basically peace, 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 peace. That's what the prayer says. Shanti is and he said that word a lot. Yeah, I'm sure in the clip you'll so hear. I'm, I'm, I'm looking Shanti, at this clip. Shanti, 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 I'm, Shanti. I'm looking at this clip and I, I, I see no protest. I see no Christian there saying I am not going to stand on that stage after that. I am not going to, but yet everybody's just getting along and, and, and you know, kumbayaing it and, and ignoring uh, what the scriptures are saying. And, you know, Jesus had this rhetorical question to the Pharisees. He says, why do you call me Lord and not do what I say to do? Like, why, why are you calling me Lord? You know, if I say not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers and you're up there with, with the Hindu priest now uh, praying to nature, this is ridiculous. All right. right. So who's yeah. next up on the uh, the video list? The next one is uh, Bishop Dwight Green, and he is with the uh, Pentecostal Church of God in Christ, and he is the he's the individual. And and uh, if you I don't know, do you want me to talk a little more, yeah, and then yeah, we'll play the it. clip? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, anyway, he says uh, ha he, that they have been interceding for God to deliver us from the coronavirus pandemic, which is what, that was the, the mantra, right? That was the mantra. They were naming it and claiming it. They were declaring it, decreeing it. And they were saying, you know, uh, uh, God, please take this away and, and all of that kind of stuff. And he just, you know, he brought that up several times in his little prayer. And he says, again, and I have a big problem when people say we are all God's children. Oh, we yeah. are not. We because are not God's children, all God's no, children. No, and the little nun said that, and then he said that as well. And I have a big problem with that. That just goes, right. flies all over the place. You know, that people so. fail to, to, to remember that uh, Jesus said to the Pharisees of his day, you are of your father, the devil. Because the things that he does, you want to do. There's two fathers. Yeah, there's a, the father of the wicked, and there's the father of lights. And you, you know, one you can't you can't be yoked up with with Hindus and New Agers and all of this other stuff and say, oh yeah, God's my father. No, he's not. <laughs> he can't be because if he was your father, you would want to uplift him and his word, not go against it. You know, especially yeah. in, in, in national TV, you want to, you know, you're dishonoring him. So, okay, so let's take a look at this guy. Is uh, Bishop, what's his name again? Uh, Bishop, uh, his name is Bishop Dwight Green. Dwight, Dwight Green. Bishop yes. Dwight Green, and I believe he's uh, with Kojic, right? He's with, yeah, he's with Church, Church of God. Of God. And, okay, mm -hmm. well, let's take a look at Bishop Green. Thank you. Would Bishop Dwight Green please come up? Good afternoon to the President, the Vice President, and all those that are assembled today at the National 
day of prayer. Let us pray. To the eternal sovereign God of creation, you have summoned your people once again to prayer. And the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ and the membership of our organization around the world has for the last 12 weeks been joined together interceding for the deliverance of our nation and our world. That God would deliver us from the coronavirus pandemic and all other debilitating plagues present in our world. We believe that the suffering and the loss of life which continues to threaten the social, economic, and geopolitical balance of our country can be curtailed when the people of God pray. You said in Psalms 107, he will send his word to heal and deliver us from destruction. Our systems are broken, no longer trusted, nor effective because we have strayed from your commandments and our people are wounded, ailing, bewildered, frustrated by empty promises. We need you to transform us to the likeness of your son, Jesus the Christ. We need your word of healing that will restore confidence in our justice system, that will reflect fairness and provide rehabilitation for redeemable offenders. We need your word to heal that promise quality early childhood education and equitable distribution of opportunities for wealth building for blacks, browns, and disadvantaged whites. We need your word of healing that will speak to the physical, emotional, and spiritual deficiencies of our nation. Your word that will cause us to recognize we are all God's children and he has called us to love and good works. You declare a house divided against itself will self-destruct. So Father, have mercy on us as we repent today for our miscarriage of justice. I repent of all offenses and disobedience of our nation to your commandments and humbly seek your forgiveness and pray for mercy that you would deliver us from this evil affliction of the coronavirus. And grant to our president, Mr. Trump, the vice president, Congress, and the religious leaders of our nation, your divine insight to navigate this pandemic in the name of Jesus Christ the Savior. And we pray divine comfort for the grieving families of those that have been lost and those that are yet struggling with the affliction inflicted by this virus. We pray your comfort, your deliverance, and your peace. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Wow and wow. Okay. Yes. yes. And if and if you notice too, Chris, he veers into social justice uh -huh. and, politi and political. He gets into that. You know, he pulls in. He gets into that social justice. The emotional uh, uh, part of it, though. Yes. Yeah, hugs the heart All strings. of that. Yeah. Yeah. And then he talks about. And this is another thing I have a problem with. And then he talks about we repent. We yeah. we repent. You know, well, I can repent for me, but you can't repent for me. Thank you. you know? That's right. That's right. So, All of anyway, us are so he, responsible to the Lord individually. Yes. Yes. So he gets into that. And then, uh, and then of course, he says that he repents for our nation. Well, that's not going to work. All right. So no. <laughs> who's, ne <laughs> who's okay. next on the list? Who's next? Well, the next one, I have I have a lot of notes on the next one, and you know who the uh -oh. next one is. Oh, the next I have one a is, I have a uh, is, is Ms. Prophetess Pastor uh -oh. Paula White Kane. Uh -oh. and, she, and she talked for how long did you say she spoke for? Yeah, I she spoke a long I think it was over four minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, again, 
if you were to remove the words declare, declare and decree from her vocabulary, she would not be able to put a whole sentence together. She would not. That's like, uh, uh, you know, I was making Chris laugh earlier. I said, that's like if somebody was to tie my hands down, I would talk a lot less. <laughs> if, if they would you say you can't use your hands daddy so uh yes and of course you know we could do a whole program on just what she said you know oh, that yeah so. oh yeah well you just know what so this, since she, since she's, she, she's talking the most so uh, what we'll do is we'll play this clip and uh we'll let it marinate in the minds and the ears of the listeners and then we'll be right back here goes paula white came declaring and decreeing pastor paula white please come up Thank you, Paula. What an honor to be here with you, Preston and First Lady, Vice President, Second Lady. It's a beautiful day to lift up our Lord and Savior. He is a certain God in uncertain times, and the Bible says if two or three of us agree as touching anything, it will be done. Job 22, verse 28 says, if you decree a thing and declare a thing, it will be established. So God, we come in agreement with your word and with your name, the name of Jesus. Psalm 40, verse 17 says, you are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O God. I declare no more delays to the deliverance of COVID-19. No more delays to healing and a vaccination. No more delays to restoration of this great nation, the United States of America. For Psalm 71, 2 says, In your righteousness, deliver us and rescue us. Incline your ear and save us. Psalm 107 says, You deliver us out of distress and out of destruction. Your word will not return void, according to Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So I declare your word. I declare divine intervention and supernatural turnaround. You will restore this land. According to Psalm 118, 25, Save our nation, O Lord, and send prosperity now. For Deuteronomy 28, 8 says, Command your blessing upon this land. You said in Deuteronomy 8, 9, To bring us into a good land without any lack for your word declares in Psalm 33 2 blessed is the nation whose God is Lord so I declare you right now to be Lord over this nation over the United States of America and we receive your blessing over any plague over any economic distress you will stay the hand of the enemy according to 2nd Samuel chapter 21 verse 16 when 70,000 men died by a plague David cried out as he covered himself in prayer and and the Lord answered and said, it is enough. Stay now thine hand. Lord, let that be the cry today. And let that be your answer. Lord, enough coronavirus. Enough to death. Enough to fear. Enough to poverty. Stay thine your hand. We pray over President Trump and First Lady, Vice President, and Second Lady, and this administration, I declare Psalm 89, verse 21, let your hand establish President Trump, and let your arm strengthen him. I declare Psalm 98, 1, that your right hand and your holy arm will give him victory. We declare victory in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 58, 11 says, guide him continually. And you said in Psalm 78, 72, that you would guide him by the stillness of your hand. You declared in Psalm 43, that send out your light and truth and let him lead his household, his administration in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we pray for your mercies, for they are new every single day. And every morning your mercies are new. Your steadfast love never ceases. I declare new mercies for hospital workers. New mercies for doctors and nurses, moms and dads, pastors and clergies, CEOs and employers, for the president, vice president. God, your love is steadfast and it endures forever. So right now, wrap your arms of love around every person who is hurting, every person who is confused, scared, tired, weary, sick, lonely, let them know your love. Let them know that you will never leave them and you will never forsake them. And in conclusion, I declare Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. I ask the Lord to do a new thing in our nation by giving waters in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Malachi 4.2 says, Jesus, arise over the nation with healing in your wings. President, one last word. Like David, 
who had had victory after victory after victory after victory, would face his biggest battle. It was called Ziglag. And they would take his wives and his children and the city would be burned down. And he cried and he wept and he began to pray out to God and God gave him a word. And through fasting and praying, I believe this is the word for you and for this nation. The Lord spoke to him and said, pursue and go after them and you shall without fail recover all. Sir, the word of the Lord, I believe for this nation and for this administration is you will recover all. Wow. Yeah. Blows your mind. <laughs> blows, your, blows, blows your mind. And, and spewed scripture the whole time. She oh, spewed yeah. scripture the whole time. Sh and it was, context. I was getting ready to say that. And she spewed it. And she spewed it completely out of context. <laughs> completely. She didn't. There was not one of them. You know, I, I I think with women like her, like with 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 Ms. Beth Moore, I said, you know, these women could, should avail themselves to a a good, solid, biblical seminary course on how to rightly div divide the Word of God. Right. You know, they need to do that because they have a clue. They have, they have no a clue. clue. I mean, no. listen, they're not even close. <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> the scripture Nowhere. she's using has nothing. To, a lot of them had to do with Israel. She's putting it yes. into the White House, and I'm like, yes. What in the world? She's butchering God's word. Yes. And <laughs> demanding. What really blows my mind is how these people can stand before the Almighty and demand that He does something. That is just so disrespectful, that, that even right just from there, an earthly point of view. That's terrifying to me. Yes. That's terrifying. Yes. I, you know, even to repeat that in my mind, even though the Lord knows we're just repeating it to prove a I point. Hate it. It, I hate like, it. It's like, remember, remember uh, the gentleman that died in the, in the plane, uh, plane crash, Miles Monroe? Yes, Miles he Monroe. Used, him and Benny Hinn used to do that. Uh, you know, we did a couple of videos in the archives. You can look that up. But I will. he said that uh, God could do nothing on planet yes. Earth without our, our permission. Our permission. And I'll the first thing that came to my mind was, that. whose yeah. permission did he need for the flood? Because I don't remember him asking anybody permission. No. <laughs> and he, you know, if he needed our permission, he would cease to be God. Exactly. <laughs> you know, but there's that elevation of man yes. and that demotion yeah. of God. Yes. See? So, yeah, so throughout her talk, I'm sure there are, are uh, our viewers have already recognized that throughout her talk, she did that the whole time. She yeah. demanded no more delays to healing and uh, and and all of that. You know, and she declared she even declared over the president. Yes, and and then the vice president, and then the first and second ladies, and and she was just going off like she like she's speaking for God. That's exactly the way that I saw it. That's wow, exactly okay. the way that I So uh, enough of Paula White, because I don't <sighs> think I can handle any more of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> who's, next on, <laughs> who's next on the list? Well, uh, we have Sister Debbie Marriott Harrison. Now, it kind of threw me a little when he called her Sister Debbie, because I thought they're surely not going to have another Catholic nun come up there. So, but she is from... The, uh, uh, the Mormon church. She's a Mormon. Ah, Latter-day Saints, huh? The Latter-day Saints, yes. And, and, uh, and she goes on and she says, we ask for a special prayer of deliverance. That's what she says in her. And we pray for an effective vaccine. So this is and, my and question. And she also prayed for unity, right? The unity. unity the, that, yeah. I have that in my notes. I sure do. And I, what, what it's really surprising to me is how many of these people who can like Paula White can decree and declare and this woman is basically doing the same thing but yet they're begging God for a vaccine right Why you know they're going declare the vaccine <laughs> but I decree and declare that it's gone well that means that God can't get rid of it without a vaccine right so she says that here you know in this wow. little prayer so. well all right let's take a look at uh De Debbie uh the Latter-day Saint very much Sister Debbie Harrison, Sister Harrison, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful this day to be gathered together with representatives from many faiths, united in prayer to appeal to Thee, Thy mercy and grace in helping us and our nation. We are grateful to be in a country where we have 
the right to exercise our religious beliefs. And we pray and cherish that those freedoms that we have will be protected and not be diminished. We are united in prayer today to ask a special blessing of deliverance, deliverance from this pandemic that has covered the earth in a devastating sickness. We ask that our doctors, nurses, and caregivers can be blessed with special protection and recognition of their sacrifices and hard work. Please bless our scientists and doctors to develop effective treatments for those who are sick and who may become sick. We pray that a safe and effective vaccine can be developed quickly to protect us so that life can return to normal. Bless the leaders of this great nation to be inspired by the to have wisdom and judgment to make good decisions and to get the economy running again. Amplify their talents. Bless our leaders to work together in harmony and unity to do what is best for the citizens of this nation. We pray for those that mourn for lost loved ones and ask thee to send thy Holy Spirit to comfort them and give them assurance that they can be reunited again through the power of our Savior Jesus Christ's resurrection. We know that without thy strengthening help, we will fail. But with thy help and tender mercies, we can do all things and we will not fail. We pray we can look to thee in every thought, doubt not and fear not. We love thee, Heavenly Father, and we call down the powers of heaven to help us, unite us, and deliver us from these troubled times. I say these things in deep gratitude for all of our blessings in the sacred name of Jesus Christ, our healer and redeemer. Amen. One. Okay, the Latter-day Saint has spoken. The problem yes. is, um, their Jesus is the brother of Lucifer. Yes. You see, when we, talk, <laughs> when we talked about different Jesuses here, you know, you can't pray with someone who says Jesus is the brother of Lucifer. Yes. Okay, that's where you lost me completely. We were not yes. sisters or brothers at that point. You are still working for the enemy, unfortunately, at that point, okay? Uh, but that's that, that was horrible. Okay, so who's next? Uh, the last one is Rabbi Ariel Sadwin. Okay. Ariel Sadwin, yes. All and, right. So, uh, yeah, so go. All right, yeah, let, let's go. Let's go look at the rabbi and see what he has to say. Roll it. Rabbi Ariel Sadwin. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Mr. President. King Solomon, in his great wisdom, writes in the second chapter of Song of Songs. There he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. The Midrash commentary explains this to be referring to Almighty God. At a time when his presence is not visible, nor is it readily apparent, but fear not, says King Solomon, he is right there, in the background, watching you through the window and the lattice. Avinu ha'av harachamon, O our merciful Father. This idea is so apparent and reminiscent to this most challenging time during which we find ourselves. Our relationship with you seems so different from what it always has been. We have not been in your house, our holy synagogues, in nearly two months, these sacred places where we go to seek you and to derive inspiration three times a day, every day, are empty, dark, and shuttered. Instead, all we have had is the sanctuary of our own homes and the limited allowable interactions. There is fear, there is sickness, there is death, wherever we turn and whenever we listen. But yet we know you are still there, watching over us as always. Ribono Shalola, master of the world, you are the Rofei Chol Basar, the healer of all flesh. We implore you to eradicate this awful plague from your earth. Heal those who suffer, comfort those who mourn, sustain those who have lost livelihood. Please bless our president, our first lady, our vice president, our second lady, and the entire administration, as well as the leaders of state and local governments who must make critical decisions each and every day. Please bless the doctors, nurses, first responders, and all medical personnel 
who dedicate their lives to save others. Please bless the selfless community and civic leaders who are doing their part to help those in need. And please bless each and every one of your 330 million children who make up the United States of America. Amen. Well, Sister Adi, what did you think of this whole well, agglomeration of, of uh, believers, quote unquote, speaking yeah. at the uh, White House? Well, let me, let me wrap up with, with the rabbi. Again, he says, bless all your 330 million children that make up the U.S., the United States of America. Again, here's someone who's saying that everybody, everyone is God's, or God's children. Is God's children. You know, right. Yeah, that's just like a big red flag for me. Yeah, so, uh, but anyway, it just it just shows the, the, the subtlety of deception because all of these people, you could tell they had, they were, they were, you know, you looked at them and they looked like, you know, just, you know, Mary Jane from next door. They weren't flamboyant except for, Ms. Paula White, but uh, <laughs> they were they were down to earth people. They were they seemed to be very very sincere in what they believed, you know. And and I, I do want to mention that there was also a uh, a military chaplain Muslim who was there too. And yeah. and what I found what I found with with him is he never mentioned he used the word God. He did not use the the term Allah. Ah, there. because of that not. generic, it's that generic term, God. Exactly, you know? exactly. So, but anyway, so yeah, so the deception is just so extremely dangerous because of who is, uh, the, the, what the deception is, who's the deception is coming through. You know, it's not people that, that seem vicious or, or, or selfish or, or uh, uh, even uh, arrogant in a lot of ways, again, other than Paula White. Uh, they, are, they seem like very kind, sweet people. They really do. And that's isn't, isn't the that, deception. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Isn't that the danger right there? Yeah. You know, um, Satan's not going to come with horns and a tail and a pitchfork. I mean, that's yeah. what Hollywood, you know, when you watch these Hollywood movies, you see the demons are yeah. looking all ugly and they're hideous and grotesque and, ah, and they, you know, they're obvious. That is not the devil. Look, yeah. you know, the devil will come as a being of light and uh, soft-spoken, calm, and probably have some answers to your problems. Probably give you a couple of some gifts or something. You know, flatter you a little bit. That's yeah. what he does. And then he stabs the knife in your back with deception. And this, yeah. you know, people don't understand that what we're seeing now, and we, you know, we kind of went over it in the beginning, but what we're seeing now is the unification of faith. We're right. seeing people come together for that one world religion, like the coexist movement and coexist et cetera. Movement. And, you know, that's right. another topic for another day, man. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and like, you know, and I, you, I'm sure you followed it along just as, just as much as I did. Uh, Chris is, is that you could really, I mean, you could see it. It was happening in the, in the, in the, the thirties and the forties and the fifties and even in the sixties, but it really, really took root and really accelerated in the the um the late eighties and the early nineties when when the this this ecumenical stuff you had uh, 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 evangelicals and Catholics together yeah you know oh I, I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital over that one you know <laughs> and so it, it so you have that and it's just accelerated. And it's only pro it's pro I probably noticed it only because I got saved in 1985 and really started recognizing it in 1990. So it, I'm sure it was happening way before then because, you know, you got Billy Graham that was involved in ecumenism and all that kind of stuff. But right. uh, so, yeah. So and now you have and I know we, we could probably finish, you know, you're the producer, but <laughs> I say we could probably wrap this up with this is the uh, the the the. Now you have the incorporation of the New Apostolic Reformation Seven Mountain Mandate. You have that within the Southern Baptist Convention. Now, according to my research, as I looked into that, and, and um, uh, Ronnie uh, Floyd created this, um, like a prayer guide, and it was now you have now you have the Southern Baptist denomination that's adopting the the New Apostolic Reformation, which is associated with the International House of Prayer and the Kansas City Prophets and all that. And that's a whole other program. They are incorporating that into the the National Day of Prayer. 
they, uh, Ronnie Floyd put together a prayer guide and it was titled, of course, it, they're not going to do the seven mountain mandate title. They're going to, they're going to change it a little bit. They're going to tweak it so that it doesn't. So, you know, to me, it's like deceptive when you do right. that. And they called it, um, the seven centers of power. That was one of the names that they called it. And it was all about uh, the seven centers of power were government, military, media, business, education, church, and family. Well, that's identical to the seven, to mountains. seven mountains. That's right. Yes, the seven that's mountains. That's are. <laughs> yes, that is New Apostolic Reformation. And uh, it's also called the seven centers of influence in America. It's the same thing. But same it's thing, under, just a different wrapping. That's all it is. They just wrapped it up in different bows. But it's the wow. same exact thing. And then you have all of these spinoffs that are taking place. I found there is now a World Day of Prayer that is led solely really? by women. Yes, that is led solely by women for women. Now, see, you know that's what? when you you, you... you know what? Let's, I want to do a whole program on that. Okay. You, you, think we can, you think you can make this happen um, maybe next week or week maybe, after maybe or whatever? So. Maybe because so. Because I, I never heard of that, and now I'm yes. curious. Yes. Yes, and so it's, it's, led, a, it's a world, what was it called, world prayer? It's called World Day of Prayer, World Day of Prayer, wow. and it's led solely by women, and it's solely to women. See, now there's the feminist movement. So, so it's in. called the World Day of Prayer, but yes. not everybody in the world can pray no. with them. I got no, you. <laughs> yes, yes, really. Yeah, world, only feminine world. The feminine yeah. world, okay. The feminine world. Like and it's, and, you know, God loves the world. Well, the elect of the world. Yeah, you know. But only the elect, yeah. <laughs> only the elect. And, uh, and, and it's held on May 3rd, and it, it involves 170 countries. And every year, a different country is chosen to be the host. Oh, wow. And what wow. they do is they adopt, they adopt the traditions and the religious traditions of that country and they make well you know what we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have to okay. end it now but okay but okay that's next <laughs> okay write it down because i probably I got forget it. but you, you need it. to remember this because i want to know what this is all about and i know you okay. have a lot to say on this so all right guys listen it was a, it's been a pleasure having uh sister Addie miller with us again you'll be seeing her a lot on lhp's uh, broadcast but um uh, again, check out her ministry, Discerning the Drift Ministry. It's on YouTube. It's on. Uh, she has a Twitter. Uh, she has um, a podcast. I think a podcast. I'm not sure if, she, if you still. No, I'm not doing podcasts oh, right you're now. Still I'm just YouTube. doing YouTube. Okay. The, just YouTube. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Thanks. though. <laughs> <laughs> I am a prophet. Just kidding. <laughs> oh. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll pray okay for you. I, can I can I call myself a, a false prophet? No. I don't know. <laughs> well yeah anyway um check her check out her channel and it'll, it'll bless you and she has a lot of wonderful content on there right now she's going through the scientology and and christianity um and what's it called the uh neo, just, neo christianity yes. in fact i just finished up that number five program was my last one i'm getting oh, yeah, ready to i've jump seen it into and it was really good and that i can't out. wait to see the rest um but good. yeah check out her channel all right guys um as we say here if we don't see you here we'll see you in the air and until next time Look up, our redemption draws near. Maranatha. Maranatha.